probably was something recorded in a tin can. <laughs> yeah, the, there's this program, this program that I use on here that's kind of neat. You can actually buy different styles of microphones for the thing. And uh, I always want to, I want to try that out, but I can't afford the 99 cents that they charge for those microphones. <laughs> it's really weird the way that some of this stuff works. You have access to all these these uh, studio microphones and everything, and uh, they only cost 99 cents. They'll make your microphone that you have sound like some other microphone that's even like a you know fancier, ex really expensive mic. Hey, I'm, there's some folks that are missing. I hope they're okay. You guys know if Jan's okay, Jan? The eye patch, is she okay? I don't see her here. And Jeannie's not here. I wonder where they're at. Nobody knows. Oh, that's all right. We'll pray for them. All right, let's start off with a word of prayer, and, and I'll pray for all the folks that aren't here, and hopefully, maybe they'll show up, but we'll go to the Lord in prayer now. Dear God, I thank you for the opportunity that I have to express your word that you've given to us. I thank you, Lord, that we have your word that we can listen to and, and cherish, and I pray, God, that we would be attentive to the things of your word this day, and I ask that you would guide us to the to the scripture that you'd have for us in this time that we have together. And I pray that we'll honor you in song and in spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's see now. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't pray for anybody, did I? You know, I was just thinking this week, it says in God's word, you know, how many of you have seen on the, on the TV that, you know, the whole thing of the new, the Pope that's supposed to come about and everything? You know, there's all this big hubbub about that. Well, you know, it's funny. You know, that, that's not religion. You say, what? Like, how could that not be religion? But the Bible, you know, when the Bible speaks of religion, it says in James, it says, true religion and undefiled before God and the Father is to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. Thankfully, I know Lulu's not a widow, but how many of you are widows by any chance? I have a number of you. And... Uh, and how many of you don't have a father here on earth any longer? No, I don't either. So we're all so we're all pretty much fatherless. So I hopefully I've come to visit you in your affliction that you've you've missed you missed your father, I'm sure, right? How old was your dad? Eighty six. Your mom's got like hundred and four, right? Yeah, Hundred and four in June, wow. So I know that your mom honored her mother and father because it says in the Bible that length of days and long life will I give unto those that, that honor their father and mother. Here comes Jeannie. Woohoo! Yay! Here she comes. We were just talking about you, Jeannie. I was going to pray for you. But when I think about the scripture where it says to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, it makes me realize, you know, I come and I sing for you and all, and I hope that's an encouraging and blessing to you, but I never really, really talk to you about your afflictions. Does anybody have something that's troubling them, even right now, that you can... I'm not going to do You what? I'm not going to do You're not doing too good. Oh, Well, I'm going to pray for you. Anybody else got something that's bugging them, you know, that maybe some ache or pain that you just want to let on to, you know? You try to keep quiet about these things, I know. We all try to, because it doesn't help to whine about it, you know? But sometimes, you know, I mean, well, if you express it to others so that they might um, pray for you, it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Um, and when I think of that verse, it, it makes me think that there's, um, the first part of it says, right, let me look it up. I don't want to misrepresent scripture, so I'm going to look up this word, effectual. We'll get this verse down. I know the verse encourages us to, to you know, bear one another's burdens and to pray for each other. Ah, uh, here it is. It says, "Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another that ye may be healed." The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So even 
even with our pains and our aches and, and our, our pains, we also want to like sometimes tell each other our faults. You say, well, I don't want people to know what, what I've got a problem with. Well, it says in the Bible we're supposed to do that. Confess your faults one to another. I think that also means a lot of times, you know, maybe you get mad at your roommate. You ever get mad at your roommate? Yeah, I imagine. Well, you might want to tell your roommate, I get mad at you and I'm sorry. You confess your fault to them and pray for one another. So you pray you pray for your roommate that you get mad at and you ask them to pray for you. Yeah, they keep the TV up too loud. Is that what you said? Yeah, something with the TV. Yeah, I know. You can't be, figure out which TV station you want to watch, right? <laughs> well, you, you know, pray for one another and encourage them to pray for you, to help you. And and we pray for them. We pray for each other. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So in all this talking, does it cause me to give you a notion of something else that's troubling you? Anything else that you can't think of anything? Well, that's good. That's good. Well, so let's let's thank the Lord for the fact that you don't apparently have any aches and pains. <laughs> yeah? I have a lot of problems right now. Okay. I've been having problems for about six months with medical wise. So I need prayer, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Okay. Well, I'm glad you brought it up. I know everybody, we all got something going on. So let's go to the Lord again in prayer, and I'll pray for a Donnie and the fact that he gets kind of upset with his roommate sometimes, and I'll pray for um, the ailments of all of us here. Hey, Janet's here. Hey, Janet. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> He's wondering where you were. Okay, so we'll go to the Lord in prayer once again. Dear God, I thank you for the chance that I have to come to you before your throne with these requests. Lord, it's only through the, the great sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, that allows us to come before your throne. We don't have to come with burnt offerings and sacrifice anymore as the folks in the Old Testament had to do, for Jesus came and fulfilled the ultimate sacrifice for all of our sins. And now through his name and his blood, we can come to you directly. And I thank you for that. Lord, I pray that you'll help Donnie and each other one here that might get upset with their roommate a little bit. I pray, God, for patience that we might all have and that we might show the love of Christ to those around us and pray for each other, God. I ask that you would help Jean with her physical ailments that she has and the trouble that she's been having lately with having to have um, operations and different things. Lord, please pull each one through the, these kind of troubles sometimes. I know Tom has been a, had a difficult time this last week, and I pray, Lord, for him, that I hope things are going well for him and, and um, for each other one here. I know everybody's got something or other than that's troubling them or that's that's hurting them physically. God, help us to look, uh, help us to look unto the hills from whence cometh our help. For God, we know that our redemption draweth nigh. Soon we'll be out of these earthly bodies, and we groan for a heavenly body. And Lord, you promise to give us that. Those of us that have confessed Christ as Lord and believe that He is risen from the dead by Your power. God, I pray that you'll meet with us here again in this time that we have together. And uh, help us to honor you in all things that are done. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a few hymn histories to read for you today. I just got this book this past week. You know, Cracker Barrel down in Big Flats. I saw one of these books. I was too cheap to pay the 20 bucks that they wanted for it there, so I looked on the internet and I got it for three bucks on the internet. Of course, it will actually cost, yeah, it costs three bucks, and then the person's charged me four bucks to have it shipped, and I had to wait like two weeks for it, but, oh, well, it's still better than 20 bucks. You saved $16. That's right. Save $16. Well, the hymn histories that I hope to read to you here um, will be, um, Ring the Bells of Heaven, I'm going to tell you the hymn history of that. Uh, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. Let's see, I'm going to cheat here and look. Uh, ring the bells of heaven. I'm, in my heart there rings a melody. And oh, how I love Jesus. So, please hold your hymn books just a little bit longer. I'm going to read you the scripture first. You can just uh, rest it against your chest or something if it's more comfortable for you to do so. Because I'm going to read you some scripture first. We're just going to open up to the scripture and see what God has for us. I open up to Colossians 2. For I would... 
that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be conformed, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and the Father, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the Spirit, joying and beholding your order, and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. I'm going to stop there for a moment. There's so many people that call themselves ministers of the gospel today that really, if you listen to their messages, they don't speak the word of God. Lots of philosophy going on in this day and age. Tonight on the History Channel, there's going to be a series about the Bible. I dare say that this is some of the nonsense of men's thinking that is going to be portrayed in, that, in those dramas. There's one portion of it that I know already that's not scriptural. It shows Moses and he says, he, he whams the spear, or the, his scepter, not scepter, his rod. He rams it into the ground and screams, follow me! On the preview they show this. That's not what happened. Moses didn't know what was going on. The children of Israel came to him and said, Would to God that we have died in Egypt. And you brought us here to, for us to die because the Egyptians are closing in on them. And Moses said to him, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You remember in the Ten Commandments with Charles Heston, which I like that movie pretty good, but that wasn't scriptural either. He holds up his staff and he says, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Now I like the way he does it. You know, Charles Heston's a great guy. But that wasn't scriptural either. He didn't do it that way. He was telling the children of Israel, you know, pretty much hold your peace, quiet down. You're going to see the salvation of the Lord. But the Lord rebuked him and said, Why criest thou unto me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. <laughs> what? He's still probably thinking, Go forward. There's no place to go. There's this big giant, this, this Red Sea in front of us. But yet, God said, Lift up your staff and raise your hand, and the waters will part. And that's what happened. He didn't ram his rod down on the ground and yell, Follow me! In fact, I think he was the last one to go through. He held up his arms. The water stayed up. I don't know if he had to walk through with his arms up the whole time. But I don't think he went ahead. I think he stayed there, kept his arms up. And they all went through on dry ground. It'll be interesting tonight if they, they get to the, the ark. Or not the ark. The uh, parting of the Red Sea, which is probably won't, tonight's episode. But it's funny. I wonder if they'll show him walking through any mud puddles or anything. Because that wasn't the case either. They went through on dry ground. You know, the same shoes that they had at the beginning of that journey, they had those that made it to the end, had the same shoes on 40 years later. <laughs> well, anyway, vain philosophy. Preachers these days rather read one verse and philosophize the whole message through it. That's why I like to read the whole scripture here. So we'll just carry on. It says... But once again, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Let me just point out one other thing. I'm not philosophizing. I'm just Here's the importance of why it is important that, that he raised up the, the rod and raised up his hand and the, and the waters were, were parted. You remember the thing that kept Moses out of the promised land when they were near the end of their journeys. God said, speak unto the rock. And he didn't. He smote it twice. And God said, that's not what I said. And you can't go into the promised land. But you know what's funny about that? Interesting. I wonder if Moses kind of already knew he wasn't going to get there anyway. Because way back when, when Caleb and Joshua came with a report and gave the good report about the land of, of Israel and the promised land, God said way back in that passage, Joshua and Caleb, the only ones going to go into the promised land, and Moses wasn't included in that. So it was already pre known beforehand that, that this was going to be the case. But nonetheless, it was because Moses did not obey the Word of God completely and exactly. And so I'm afraid that's what this Bible series is going to be. 
a farce, you know, really. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give it one, I'll throw it one bone, as they say. I'm glad that they're acknowledging the Bible, at least these days, you know, by doing a show about it. Because there's a lot of people that don't know one thing about the Bible. Don't even know about Noah's Ark, probably. So, for that reason, I'm glad it's there, but I wish they'd read the scripture and get it right. Yes, Jan? Mike, what's up? Um, Moses' problem to the fact that he said, see the water that I've given you, and it wasn't. Oh, I never noticed that. Maybe maybe that's there. Yeah, that's. I'll look for that. Thanks for that. Okay, so I'll carry on and finish the chapter, and then we'll do some singing. Um, once again, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses. You know when it says the word quickened, what that means is given life. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your dead flesh, it doesn't say dead, but it is, the flesh is dead, hath he quickened, made alive, together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. All those laws and rules in God's word in the Old Testament that were there as a representation of the fact that we are evil, we cannot attain salvation, we have to have faith in God, and all those things that were done, all those ordinances that were there to just point us to the fact that we are unworthy, that was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Jesus fulfilled all the Old Testament law, and we rely on Him totally, as it says once again, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It's all about Jesus and his word. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Once again, when Jesus was nailed on that cross, all the principalities and powers of this world, the evil darkness of Satan and his wretched followers, were, were laughing at him. He spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward if in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if he be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which are to perish with the using, which all are to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men. Let me read that without the parenthetical comment. The touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using. That's what he's talking about, these ordinances that people want to... You know what God said to, about the Pharisees? They want to lay burdens on people, grievous to be born. You know, you. and there's the same kind of stuff in this day and age. You shouldn't have long hair. You shouldn't wear pants. You shouldn't wear a beard. I mean, this is back more towards the 60s, you know, where there's a lot of hippies and they were all... You know, there were people even uh, griping about little round glasses because John Lennon from the Beatles wore round glasses and people were upset about that. You know, just, women shouldn't wear pants. All this stuff. It's like pharisaical nonsense of when Jesus walked the earth. Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest for your souls. For my burden, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. 
Jesus doesn't come here to lay burdens on us. He doesn't come here and say, you need to grovel at my presence. And you need to, you know, climb the steps of Mount something or other on your knees to come to me. No, he did it all for us. He took upon himself the form of a servant and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He girt himself with a towel and washed the disciples' dirty feet, even the one who would betray him that evening, Peter. Well, here's what that scripture says without the parenthetical part. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances after the commandments and doctrines of men? And all those things like, don't do this, don't do that. <laughs> do what the God says. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom in all worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. So the Lord bless his word. Colossians 2, we just finished reading. I'm wondering... Lisa Lada, Lisa Lada, Lisa Lada, Lisa Lada. Do you know the German national anthem? Do you know what it is? I don't want to put you on the spot. Is that that's what it was probably before World War II, maybe? You know what it is now? What's that? Do I know what? What, what the German national anthem is now. What you were just saying, whatever that was, what is, what is that translated, what you just said? Germany, Germany, overall. Wow, that's neat. I didn't know that. That, I'm guessing, was the German national anthem before World War II. I just learned something yesterday. And I'm going to just sing this in a cappella a little bit. Um, but you know what it is now? Is a, is a tune by Franz Joseph Haydn. And it was the Austria national anthem from the time it was written in the late 1700s. Uh, what happened was Austria had that as their national anthem. Well, this tune that I'm going to sing you a verse from, and you'll, you'll know it in an instant. But Austria had this as their national anthem, and then when Hitler took over Austria in World War II, he took the, their national anthem and made it Germany's national anthem. After World War II, the Austrians didn't want anything to do with Nazi Germany anymore, so they dropped that as their national anthem, Austria. And Germany kept this as their national anthem, and it is as still today. But this song, the words of this song, like I mentioned, Haydn, the famous composer, wrote the music, but John Newton, the guy who wrote Amazing Grace wrote the words to this to go with the, the music of Austria written by Franz Joseph Haydn. Glorious things of thee are spoken, Zion, city of our God. He whose word cannot be broken, form thee for his own abode. On the rock of ages founded, what can shake thy sure repose? With salvation's walls surrounded, thou mayest smile at all thy foes. Have you heard that tune before? Like I say, it's now the German national anthem. If you have an opportunity to go to Germany and you hear that song, you better stand, or the German people won't like you. Let me just read you the, the other verses without singing them. See the streams of living waters springing from eternal love. Well supply thy sons and daughters, and all fears of want remove. Who can faint while such a river ever flows their thirst to assuage? Grace which, like the Lord the giver, never fails from age to age. Round each habitation hovering, see the clouds and fire appear, for a glory and a covering, showing that the Lord is near. Thus delivering from our uh, banner light by night and shade by day, Safe they feed upon the manna, which he gives them when they pray. What a great song. Okay, now, 
In fact, you folks are holding your, your hymn books. Is it open at 189? 189. But you're going to have to hold them just a moment longer as I tell you a little story about this one. Okay? Back in the, the early 1800s, the, uh, there was this song that, that had no chorus to it. And uh, the song was actually written by Frederick Whitfield, this, the, the verse of, of this particular song. At the same time, there was, this little, there was this little tune that was going around that folks would sing different, different hymns to, but the tune had no, no, uh, no hymn to call its own. So they'd sing this little tune to like Amazing Grace, and and the um, and this. Here's how it would go to Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Though once I was lost, but now I'm found. All right, I messed that up. But was blind, but now I see. And then like. Uh, also the song, Oh, how I... Wait a minute, let's see. Alas, and did my Savior bleed. That song goes, Alas, and did my Savior bleed. But to this tune it would be, Alas, and did my Savior bleed, And did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head For such a worm as I? So there was the tune. There was also this little... There was this little chorus that was floating around that had no verses to it. And that song was this. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Actually, they would sing that tune to the end of Amazing Grace and also Alas, and Did My Savior Bleed and a number of other songs. So that little chorus was attached to, like, the verses of Amazing Grace. It wasn't until somebody or another discovered that the song that was called, There Is a Name I Love to Hear. That had the verses, but no chorus. When somebody decided to put that song with the chorus, we have the song now in its completed version called, Oh, How I Love Jesus. So it's a marriage of, of a song that had no chorus with a little chorus that had no verses. Nobody actually knows who wrote the little phrase of, Oh, How I Love Jesus, but... Um, the, the chorus, but we're going to sing that all together now. Finally, reason for holding your hymn books. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells of the Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me, it tells me what my Father hath in store for every day. And though I tread a darksome path, you'll sunshine all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loves me. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. verses that aren't attached to that song that I'm going to sing you sing you the other verses and we'll just do it a cappella and then when we do the chorus you all can sing along with me because I'm sure these are unfamiliar verses as they were to me it tells me what my father hath in store oh, I think that's one we actually did read right oh okay let me see what the next one says it tells of one who's loving heart okay we did that one too I thought the first one we did okay here's the ones that we don't know 
It bids my trembling heart rejoice. It dries each rising tear. It tells me in a still small voice to trust and never fear. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. This name shall shed its fragrance still along this thorny road. Shall sweetly smooth the rugged hill that leads me up to God. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. And there with all the blood bond throng from sin and sorrow free. I'll sing the new eternal song of Jesus' love for me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. The next song is on 203 or 204. What, what's the name? Uh, I'm not sure which one. Is it Ring the Bells of Heaven? Or is it uh, yeah, In My Heart There Rings a Melody? Oh, 203. I think it's one, oh, 203, okay, 203. So that's for, which one is that one? It keeps me singing. Okay. Is it? No, wait a minute. No, it's the one next to it. What's that? Um, In my heart there rings a melody. That's 202. In my heart there rings a melody. 202. In my heart there rings a melody. You got it, Mr. Wilson? Okay. Now, I was going to read you this hymn history, but I think we're going to be running out of time if I go along and read it so well. Well, it's kind of neat, though. I just mentioned this. This song was actually one that was written back in 1923 um, by uh, Elon or Elton M. Roth, and it was just you know this is really pretty much of a new of a new hymn. But here's the thing I want to do with this song also. For years I've wondered. There's a little counter melody that goes with this song that an old dorm supervisor that I had at Bob Jones University would would teach us, and I couldn't remember it. So I called him this past week, and he reminded me of what that little tune is. So we'll sing it together, the three verses that I have. I don't know how many of yours has. Three verses. And in the last verse, don't let me throw you off, but while you're singing the chorus, I'm going to sing that little counter melody that I mentioned. Okay, so here we go. We'll sing the three verses of In My Heart There Rings a Melody with chorus after each. I had a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. Tis the melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody of love. I love the Christ who died on Calvary. Washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to stay. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love to be the endless theme in glory. I will sing to be a song with glorious harmony when the courts of heaven ring. Sunshine, rain, and precious reviving again. Sunshine and the rain, harvest, golden grain. Sunshine, rain, and precious reviving again. The Lord will send the sunshine and the rain. I told you I was going to sing that counter melody. Jeannie's back there going, I don't see that. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was going to do that. That's the little counter melody. It goes, 
Sunshine, rain, and precious reviving again. The sunshine and the rain, harvest golden rain. Sunshine, rain, and precious reviving again. The Lord will send the sunshine and the rain. Okay, so what's the other song we got here? Ring the bells of heaven, right? 204. Turn over one page to 204. And I want to tell you this story. This one is definitely an interesting story. Um, Civil War musician George Root wrote a song entitled Glory, Glory, the Little Octoroon. The word Octoroon was a term defining a person of one eighth African ancestry. I don't know what that means. But in Root's song, a little Octoroon named Rosa was sitting with her mother in a southern plantation at the close of the day when they heard the sounds of northern troops in the distance. The mother, a slave, knew that this might be Rosa's one and only chance for freedom. With heart-tugging courage, she told little Rosa to fly, my precious darling, to the Union camp. I will keep the hounds and hunters here. Go right through the forest through... Uh, go, th- wait, go right through the forest, though tis dark and damp. God will keep you, dear one. Never fear. That's actually the verse. And then the chorus that, of this song that it's speaking of. It said, Glory, glory, how the freedom free men rang. The freed men were saying, Glory, glory, how the old wor- woods rang. Twas the loyal army sweeping to the sea, flying out the banner of the free. Now let me sing you that, that Civil War tune and how it went. Let's see. Fly, my precious darling, to the Union camp. I will keep the hounds and hunters here. Go right through the forest, though tis dark and damp. God will keep you, dear one, never fear. Glory, glory, how the freedmen sang. Glory, glory, how the old woods rang. T'was the loyal army sweeping to the sea, flying out the banner of the free. Sometime later, Christian hymnist William Cushing, hearing it, determined to claim the tune for gospel music. And in his autobiography, Story of a Musical Life, he wrote, The melody rang in my head all day long, chiming and flowing in its sweet musical cadence. I wished greatly that I might secure the tune for use in Sunday school and for other Christian purposes. When I heard the bells of heaven ringing of some sinner that had returned, the words, Ring the bells of heaven at once flowed down, into the waiting melody. And we'll sing that song as he changed it into Ring the Bells of Heaven. Ring the bells of heaven, there is joy today for a soul returning from the wild. See the Father meets him out upon the way, welcoming his weary, wandering child. Glory, glory, how the angels sing. Glory, glory, how the loud harps ring. Is a ransom army like a mighty sea, pealing forth the anthem of the free. Ring the bells of heaven, there is joy today, for the wanderer now is reconciled. Yes, the soul is rescued from his sinful way, and is born a new a ransom child. Glory, glory, how the long hearts ring, glory, glory, how the angels sing. Tis a ransom army like a mighty sea, pealing forth the anthem of the free. Bring the bells of heaven, spread the feast today, angels swell the glad triumphant strain. Tell the joyful tidings, bear it far away, for a precious soul is born again. Glory, glory, how the angels sing, glory, glory, how the loud harps ring. Is a ransom army like a mighty sea, peeling forth the anthem of the free. So I think I just done told you all the hymn histories ahead for you. I think. Let me just double check, make sure I got to it. Yep, yep. So there's kind of interesting stories behind a lot of these hymns. I thank the Lord that I found my three dollar book so I could share it with you. I got one other song I'm going to sing for you. Um, yep. It says in 1 John 3, I believe it is, God's Word says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when Christ shall appear, we shall see Him, we shall be just as He is. 
I often knock the monkey up to the title of this song and call it Once on a Hillside. But it's actually called We Shall See Jesus. Once on a hillside People were gathered Hoping to see Him As thousands were fed He touched the blind eyes Healed broken spirits Moved with compassion raised up the dead. Once on a hillside, people were gathered, watching as Jesus was crucified. showed mercy to the one who had healed them, yet Jesus loved them as he suffered and died. Once on a hillside, people were glad. soon would ascend. And as he blessed them, he rose to the heaven and gave them this promise to come back again. We shall see Jesus just as they saw him. that a great promise? Once again, behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when Christ shall appear, we shall be like Him, but we shall see Him as He is. What a blessed promise. Let's go to the Lord and thank Him for that now. And then when we're done with our prayer, we'll sing, Jesus loves me. Dear God, I thank you so much for the opportunity that I have to bring your word forth to folks and to sing together for your praise. And God, I ask that you would keep each one safe until the time that we're able to get back together. Lord, I thank you for the life that you've given to us and most preciously, the life that is given through your Son. When we confess Christ as Lord and believe God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. I thank you for that promise too. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. ended on time today. Only four minutes over. I appreciate you all folks coming by. I hope you have a good time playing bingo or whatever you're doing next. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming in, Mike.
Thanks, Henry. Okay. Thanks, Henry. Okay. Thanks for coming, Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, Henry. Thank you. Hey, Daddy, God bless you. I'll do what I gotta do. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Hey, Lou. Hi there. <laughs> How you doing? Good. Good. You? Good. Hey, Dick. Thanks Jake. for coming down. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I saw you guys in the paper there. I saw yeah, you in the article. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. I saw that book of books in the car. Nobody should miss a picture for a criminal, right, Joe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was nice. And so far, man. Oh, thanks. Yeah, the 